Hi, I'm Gidon from thetechnologyman.com. Today I'm going to show you how to produce a 360 degree spherical photo uh, like you see on Google Street View. Uh, it's a really nice way of taking a photograph and it allows you to interact with it. So you can drag around the photo on the internet, you can look up, you can look down, you can look behind you, uh, you can zoom in and you can zoom out. Uh, I'm going to show you how to produce this type of photo um, using only free software because you have to take a series of images series of images and stitch them together and then you need to publish it to the internet and there's a few other little things you need to do as well. Uh, these are the photos I've taken for this spherical panorama. They're of a, a place in North Devon um, called Baggy Point uh, near Croyd. Um, how many pictures you need to take depends on the camera and the lens combination. Uh, here I'm using a fisheye lens which is seven and a half millimeter lens on a uh, uh, a G80 Panasonic Micro Four Thirds camera. Uh, so in this case, I, I need a minimum of about three or four photos around um, and one up, which is a Zenith shot and one Nadir shot, which is looking down. And that gives you the full 360 times 180 degree field of view uh, all around, basically. I've taken slightly more than I need here. Um, I'm doing all these handheld. Ideally, you'd use a tripod, but the software is pretty good nowadays, so you can do it handheld. How I've done these shots is I actually, dra I actually um, attached a bit of string with a weight on the bottom of it to the front of the lens around the point which we want to rotate. Uh, and then this plumb line, uh, you look at where it, uh, where it touches the ground and rotate around that point. Uh, the best point to rotate around is called the entrance pupil of the lens or sometimes called uh, the nodal point, uh, which is incorrect, but it's actually the entrance pupil. And if you rotate exactly around that point, then you'll get no stitching errors. Um, you get stitching errors because of something called parallax. Um, if you hold out a finger in front of your uh, face and close one eye and then close the other eye, you'll see that stuff behind your finger moves relative to that finger. Now, if you imagine that with a lens, then it's going to be very hard to stitch uh, the images together. So uh, it's normally near the front of the lens uh, and when things are far away, it's not so much of an issue. So if you attach a bit of string uh, with a weight near the front of the lens um, and make sure you reference where it, where, it's on the, where it is on the ground and rotate around that point rather than rotating your whole body, you should get pretty good results. I'm using a fisheye lens because I can take fewer pictures, especially if you're doing it handheld. Um, the fewer pictures you need to take, the better. Uh, even with the, the number of pictures taken on this fisheye lens and camera combination, I still get a really high resolution photo, much higher than you'd get from these sort of single click um, cameras like the Theta. One thing when you take in a 360 panorama is you have to decide on your exposure and you have to fix the exposure. So you have to choose what exposure you're going to use for the whole panorama. Uh, there's various ways of doing this. The most accurate way would be to take a reading off the, the shadows, take a reading off the highlights and then choose somewhere in the middle. Um, if you're in a rush, which is what I was here because I had the whole family with me, uh, I just chose the, the view that I was probably most interested in, took a meter reading, say here, so this is a, a meter reading from the camera, looked at the settings, say it was uh, f3.5 um, and shutter speed of I don't know, 1 over 500. I uh, then put it into manual mode, set everything uh, fixed, um, so that same shutter speed and uh, aperture, and also make sure the ISO. Um, and also the white balance is set, in this case the daylight, everything's set manual, so nothing changes. The reason you want to do that is because when you try and stitch all these images together, if the exposures are different, it'll be very hard to blend them correctly. So it's important to set your camera to manual and uh, choose an average uh, exposure for the whole panorama. So here these images are overlapping by probably uh, more than the minimum of 25%, uh, almost 50% in a lot of cases. And then I've taken one up, which is called the Zenith shot, and one down, which is called the Nadir shot. And this allows you to actually look down at your feet uh, and all around you look up in the air and, and uh, you'll see nothing, you'll see no um, signs of how the picture was taken, which is quite nice. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so we're gonna use free software. Uh, the software is called uh, Hugin and that we're going to stitch all these images together. So if we start up that application, 
select all the images and drag it into the software. Because this is a manual lens, it's a Sam Young 7.5 millimeter fisheye lens um, on a Panasonic G80, I have to actually put in the focal length. If it was a normal uh, autofocus lens which communicated with the camera, it would pass all that across, but in this case it doesn't. So you just have to put these details in manually in, in this case. It's a full frame fisheye, 7.5 millimeter. The crop factor of this camera, the G80, Panasonic G80 is two. So that's giving you the effective focal length at 50 millimeter on a full frame camera. So we click okay to that. Don't worry about that message. And what it does now is it just lines all the pictures up roughly. It's not done anything clever here. Um, the next thing we need to do is click on a line. And it, here it has to do the, the clever stuff where it basically analyzes all the images and it uh, creates what stitching software calls control points, uh, which are um, locations on the image that share across different images, often multiple images. The more control points and the more accurate it can find these control points, the better the, the stitch will be. So this is one area where the, the free software takes a little bit longer um, than the paid software, but it still does a decent job. So you can see now it's, uh, it's not really missing. It's just showing you a very rough stitch of it altogether, not showing you the proper blending or anything else. Um, you can also look up the top here and it says the images are connected by 179 control points. Mean error is 9.3 pixels. As you do a few of these, you get to know what is a good error. For handheld, that's not too bad. You can see my shadow and my foot uh, are sort of showing up there. Um, but generally, if you're sort of looking in between the pictures, they actually align fairly well, considering this was handheld. Now the next steps I'm going to show you, you don't absolutely need to do, um, but I want to get rid of the shadow and my foot. But because we've got enough overlapping pictures, we can roughly do this, and then we might have to fill in the, um, the gaps that are created um, uh, with some sort of uh, Photoshop type software. I think I'm going to, I'm going to use GIMP in this case. Okay, so if we click the in interface and change it to advanced, we can see we've got uh, all the images listed here. Um, and the thing we want to take a look at is masks. So if we choose, uh, for example, this image, maximize the screen, we add a new mask. And we want to say that I don't want this included in the picture. So click around the image, double click to finish and make sure that in this case says exclude region. So we don't want that bit in the picture. All right, let's see if there's anything else we don't want included. So we also don't want uh, the shadow here. Now I'm going to do this roughly in this case. You could obviously zoom in and take a lot more care. And the more careful you are here, the less work you'd have to do in um, Photoshop or whatever your photo editing software would be. And finally, we'll add a mask here. So again, in this, in this situation, we're excluding the shadows. All right, so when we now switch to this image, again, it actually gives you a live preview that um, shows you uh, that we've got rid of the shadow and mask. And we have left a couple of holes in the panorama, which we can more easily fix uh, later. And, and it's a bit unlucky, I suppose there's a long shadow here, but uh, often you wouldn't have to do that extra work or you might just want to leave your shadow in if you're happy with that. So you can see we've got a fairly decent um, join of all the images. Um, the error um, is 9.3 pixels. Again, it's gone down a little bit. We can actually press Control T to run the optimizer just to see if it can arrange the control points better. We can say yes to that. If we go to the move drag tab at the top there, uh, again, I'm still in the expert mode here, and click on straighten. You see it actually does a pretty good job of straightening the horizon, which is good enough for this case. As I say, in this tutorial, I'm not concentrating on getting this absolutely perfect. And um, I'm just showing you that you can get some really good results with free software. So that's really all that we need to do in, in Hugin. You can go back to the assistant here um, 
and we'll choose create panorama. Um, we'll actually leave it as a TIFF file, which is an uncompressed file. Um, and we'll click OK. It says it has to be saved. I'm going to call it baggy point. And again, we'll call the image baggy point. Save that. So now it actually creates the full resolution image and it also does all the blending. Uh, again, this takes much longer on um, Hugin than it does on other software like PT GUI. But it, you know, the software is free. So what we're going to, what we're going to do next um, is try and fill in those holes. And again, along the free software theme, I'm going to use uh, GIMP, which you can download free. It's open source software. Um, and we're going to use the clone tool to, to clone away those little holes, which is, is quite, quite easy. Okay, I think we're almost there and it's done. Okay, so we can close out of the software and we'll see here is the uh, final image. Um, here's how it looks uh, without the wraparound showing, so just the image as it is. And you can see the, quite clearly the little holes there we're going to patch in. And I can actually show this uh, image in a free 360 degree viewer. So you can see that we can drag around the image and those are uh, those are little holes we need to take care of. So we'll do that now. So I'm going to load this uh, image into uh, GIMP. Uh, obviously you could use Photoshop if you had that, but again I'm using free software in this case. GIMP is quite powerful, but it's not the, the most user-friendly program. Um, just depends on what you're familiar with. Okay, so we can see um, the holes we've got here, which we need to take care of. The easiest way of doing this is to tap the C key for clone. Um, set your brush size by pressing the right bracket key. You want to sort of get a fairly big brush size here. Um, and we can also just look over here and see how we want slightly soft edges in this case. Control click somewhere where you want to clone from. And uh, click away. And again, I'm not going to do a super careful job here, but just to, to show you. You want to make sure, because this also wraps around this bottom bit, you definitely don't want to go over to the edge here. Um, A slightly bigger brush size, control click. All right, so even with a even with a rough, very quickly done job, uh, if you didn't know this um, was done, it'd be hard to to see. Uh, right, so we export it. Um, export it in this case uh, as a JPEG file because this is our final image which we're going to um, be able to publish to the, the internet. I think I'll up this to 95%. We can close that down, close, close up GIMP. Okay, and this is the final image which we can now upload to. Uh, a sharing platform. If we load it again into the um, FSP viewer, which is again a free download, you can, uh, I'll show you a link for that. Here we can see the final image. And you actually look, it actually looks pretty, pretty good. You can hardly tell where it's been joined together. And it, it shows, uh, you can get good results and just this handheld shot of the bottom and the top you can see there's no um, you can't see where the where my feet were or the shadow or any other details and where the stitching's done it'd be hard to spot this now um, 
So you know, that's, the, that's pretty much the final result. The only thing we need to do now is to share it. And there's quite a few ways of doing this. Again, a lot of them are paid, but a free um, way of doing it is to use Google Street View. You can simply download the Google Street View app to your, um, your phone, uh, log in with your Google account, and, uh, and upload the, the photo. You can even give it a location, which I've already done for this one. You can see in the article uh, the final image on Google Maps. Okay, I hope you found that useful. Uh, if you did like the video, please do click on the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to see more details, please look at thetechnologyman.com. Thanks very much for watching.